Hey guys, and welcome back to That LP Show. The name of the game is Metroid Prime for the Wii. I got my scan visor ready here because as soon as the boss fight starts, I want to be able to scan the monster. Uh, with every single boss fight in the game, you do want to make sure that you do scan it because once you kill it, it's gone and you can't go back. And if you didn't scan it, then you're screwed out of getting 100% of your logbook done. So just don't forget. Alright, let's scan this thing. While we're doing that, we'll circle around it so we can try to avoid some of its attacks. Morphology. Parasite Queen. Parasite Female. Genetically enhanced by unknown means. A weak spot has been detected in this creature's mouth. Use your auto-targeting to acquire this new target. Scans indicate the presence of a potent mutagen. Origins unknown. Creature exhibits the ability to fire weapon-grade blast of energy from its mouth, a trait not present in the standard parasite genome. It appears the pirates have begun a bioengineering program with considerable results. Alright, let's switch back to the combat visor. Let's try to find an opening in this barrier. Now, if you time it properly, you can actually rapid-fire the missiles by uh, alternating between the missiles and your uh, power beam. As soon as you fire a missile, press the press the whatever button you have equipped to fire your power beam, and uh, don't fire the beam, just uh, press the button to where it closes the arm cannon. So as you can see, I can do some rapid fire there. So it is a little difficult to master, but once you got the timing down properly, you can spit out missile after missile after missile without pause. Uh, it only works with the power beam, it seems. It's, I guess it's some kind of glitch, or maybe it just has something to do with the rate of fire of the power beam, which does have the highest rate of fire out of every single beam in the game. And we need to get out of here because we dropped that rotting carcass into the reactor core. Seems like every place Samus visits blows up eventually. I activate the elevator. Let's get up there. And don't worry, we got, we, we got like seven minutes to get out of here. It's not a big problem, so we can take our time as long as you don't just stand around fooling, you know, fooling around doing nothing. All right, we wanted to scan that thing because there is a turret right here um, somewhere. Well, oh yeah, there it is. Okay, we could blow it up if we wanted to. But if you scan that thing, you don't have to worry about wasting missiles. And, okay, I guess something already exploded in here. Take you out. Oh, I keep forgetting. You guys are stronger on veteran mode. I don't play it very often, to be honest. I just thought I'd do it for the sake of this LP. Alright, we're going through these tunnels now. We're going to get a bunch of swarms of parasites. Just jump over them with the spring ball. And we're going to get hit anyway, but they do negligible damage. Alright. Shoot this door to open it. Get back into morph ball mode. Seems to be the quickest way. I love the spring ball in this Wii version. This makes it so much easier to navigate. You don't have to worry about setting bombs in order to jump in morph ball mode. Although you do actually have to have the morph ball bombs in order to do the spring ball. I don't know how that works. I mean, you should just be able to do it. Come on, hurry up, up the hill, up the hill. There we go. And of course, there's a door in my way. So these guys are getting all over me now. All right, let's get out of here. Missile you. Missile you, and let's grab these things to recover. All right, let's not worry about going up a hill in more fall mode. All right, wait here, because we have this huge piston that will crush us if we get in the way. Let's just follow it. There will be an opening over here to the right. There we go. And as we enter here, we're introduced to a familiar face. And there he is, Ridley, covered in metal because he had to get bioengineered enhancements from his last ass-kicking in Metroid 1. 
I know he does explode, at least that's what a sprite shows, but I guess canonically he actually survived. Alright, we can press the Z button on while well, pointing at these things to use our grapple beam. And later on we will be able to scan those things, but for right now we can't. It's, it's like the space pirates. Alright, let's scan this thing to disable another turret. And where are you? There we go. We want to wait for this stuff to clear out. Come on. There we go. Then use our scan by not on that thing, on this thing. And with that contrived excuse of a plot device out of the way, we are stripped of all of our, uh, well, most of our, uh, functions. We lost the various suit, we lost the morph ball, we lost the missiles, we lost the charge beam, we lost the grapple beam. That's going to be actually one of the last ones that we get. Alright, so let's just make it through here. we got to play the waiting game with this door. Alright, open that. Come on, open, open. We have three and a half minutes left. And once we go through this door, we are home free, mission complete. And as you see there, we unlocked uh, a little achievement. We got ourselves a gray credit. You could use uh, the credits that you earn in this game to unlock the different bonus features. Like, you know, art gallery data, uh, soundtrack data. All right, so it looks like we're going to be landing here on the planet that the ship was in orbit around. This is Talon 4. All right, so here we are on the surface of this wonderful looking planet called Talon 4. I don't know where the other three Talons went. Uh, maybe Samus visited them at one point and now they're gone. That seems to happen with planets that Samus visits. Uh, we tracked Ridley here. We seem to have lost track of him. So I guess we're going to have to start searching for him. See if we can find some clues as to what's going on around here, what the space pirates are doing. Our first order of business is to scan Samus's gunship here. Hunter class gunship registered to Samus Aaron. You can return to your ship to recharge energy, reload weapons, and save progress in the game. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the only save point in the game that restores your missiles as well as your health and lets you save the game. So, all right, well, looks like we have a door here that we can go through. So let's go on through. We got a new enemy right here. Come on, what are you called? Beetle, burrowing insect with resilient carapace, extremely aggressive. Insect's massive mouth enables it to tunnel through solid rock at high speeds. Above ground, beetles can cover short distances rapidly. They attack anything that moves near their lair, like me. Okay, let's take these guys out. They're easy enough. And we got some new morphology here. It's not really a creature, but I guess it can hurt you if you get too close. Sap Sack. Chemical reaction within the within pr sack produces violent explosion when agitated. Because of its irresistible odor and sweet nectar, the Sap Sack was nearly eaten out of existence. The evolution of an explosive chemical sack saved it. Now only brave or indigenous creatures dare to devour it. Well, I'm not going to eat it, but I am going to show you what happens when you shoot it. 
explodes. And it wouldn't be a Nintendo game without mushrooms, would it? Or they look like mushrooms. Blast cap. Volatile chemicals within this weed's toxic fungal cap may explode if agitated. The poisonous flesh of the blast cap helps keep it from being eaten. It also detonates its fungal cap when it senses even the slight contact. So yeah, same thing. These things explode when agitated. There's a lot of explosive foods here. Pop rocks would be very popular. All right, what do we got here? Ah, classic enemy, Zoomer. Angers itself to walls and other surfaces. Avoid contact with spikes. A basic nerve center located directly above Zoomer's mandibles detects nutrients. Sharp spines protect it from casual predators, but the lack of a reinforced carapace makes the Zoomer vulnerable to, to any direct indirect attacks. So yeah, that pretty much means we can shoot it and it will die. All right, we got one up here kind of hiding from us, and an evolved form of the Zoomer, if you will. Gemer, wall-crawling mollusk with retractable spikes. The Gemer is an evolutionary offshoot of the Zoomer family. When threatened, it extends lethal spikes and retracts its head deep into its armored carapace. So yeah, we can't just kill it with our power beam. We're going to need something that packs a little more punch. Oh, oh, you bastard. Revenge. There we go. There, I got my health back. All right, let's scan this thing to get this elevator acted. Activated, acted. Access to Chozo Ruins West. All right, Chozo Ruins, huh? So it looks like some of Samus's old friends are here. And if you look closely, you'll notice that these elevator scenes were not reformatted for a widescreen ratio. So Samus is looking a little fat there. Also, if you notice, they didn't uh, they didn't seem to format the HUD uh, for widescreen either, so that looks all stretched out, but it's not too much of an eyesore. At least everything else looks like it properly fits on a widescreen TV. Oh, yes, this thing, the hint system. Abnormal seismic activity detected. Uh, there's a hint system. If you take too long nearing your objective, these little things pop up. They're very annoying. They take up a portion of the screen. You can push the one button. It'll open up your map, and it'll show you where you're supposed to go. Uh, you know what? I think the point of this entire Let's Play is for me to show you where to go. So um, I'm pretty sure. Let, let's, uh, let's check this out under options. Uh, display, hint system, there we go. We're gonna turn this thing off just so it stops getting in our way. Take you guys out. And here's something interesting. Like the pirate data we scanned on the ship, uh, this adds more to the story. This is Chozo lore. Chozo script translated. The history of the Chozo stretches back into ancient times, so far into the fog of the past that we know not where our ancestors came from. One thing is clear, however. The Chozo who colonized Talon IV made a conscious choice to eschew civilization of advanced technology. We Chozo, cho we Chozo chose that doesn't roll off the tongue very easily to live in harmony with nature, guided by the providence of the universe. We believe we will spend peaceful days here and plan to leave our words from time to time. All right, so looks like the uh, an offshoot of the Chozo race, which raised and which adopted and raised Samus, uh, colonized this planet at one point, and it doesn't look like they live here anymore because these are Chozo ruins, and obviously, if the Chozo still lived here, these wouldn't be in ruin. All right. So, uh, funny thing about the Chozo lore, uh, like I said in the first episode, uh, in the European localization of this game, some of the uh, Chozo lore and uh, pirate data was actually changed, uh, making a slightly different story. You know what? I forgot to... Well, I'd be able to do it later, but I want to do it now. Let's see, new research, there's a blast shield on the door blocking access, analysis indicates that the blast shield is invulnerable to beam weapons, explosive weapons may damage it. Alright, so looks like we don't have anything that explodes right now, so we're going to have to bypass that. So yeah, there's a slightly different story because of the changed uh, logbook entries. What do we got here? New creature, morphology, scarab, exploding parasites that can embed their bodies in solid rock. Scarabs think nothing of sacrificing themselves for the safety of their swarm. When a hostile life form is sighted, they block its progress by embedding themselves in floors and walls, embedding scarabs violently self-destruct when threatened. All right, well, I'm not gonna threaten them. I'm actually going to hurt them. 
Yeah, uh, the changes made to the logbook in the European version were actually passed on to the NTSC Player's Choice version. And uh, we'll go ahead and read that while I'm talking. You can pause it if you want. Um, yeah, they were passed on to the NTSZ version of the Player's Choice, and uh, most of those also made it here into the Trilogy version. Uh, I do like some of the choices that they've made in changing the um, the Chozo lore because it just makes uh, more sense in, in terms of series canon. We got some more Chozo lore right here. Many long years have passed since we Chozo first took root in this land. The passage of time has always been a source of fascination to us. It is the belief of many Chozo sages that the truth that the truths of the universe hide within the tumbling currents of time's flow. Even as we search for answers there, however, we find illumination in other unexpected places. We know not how the ability has come to us, but recently, many Chozo have begun to sense things beyond the realm of ordinary perception. Strange sights and inexplicable sensations flood our minds, filling us with visions. We take this growing ability to be a sign of our burgeoning harmonization with the infinite. Perhaps finally, the universe's secrets are becoming known Known to us oh okay so it looks like uh, the Chozo came here became all one with nature all hippie like and then they started having visions uh, I think they may have been partaking in some of the indigenous flora all right, we got a new thing here war wasp hive primary war wasp dwelling only vulnerable to heavy weaponry oh no let's read the rest of that uh, war wasps build their homes over existing crevices using whatever materials are close at hand. They carry building... You mind? They carry building fragments back to their construction site with their four legs and glue them into place with adhesives secreted, with adhesives secreted from their ad abdomens. So glue comes out of their belly buttons. That, that's, a, that's attractive. All right. Oh, it looks like they've come out to play. War Wasp, airborne insect equipped with a venomous stinger capable of shearing steel. That's pretty damn sharp. It's like adamantium war wasps. The war wasp rarely strays far from its hive unless it is pursuing an immediate threat. It attacks with no regard for its own survival, dive bombing its enemy with stinger extended. Fast working toxins from the stinger can inca incapacitate most small organisms. Oh, well, I'm not that small, but I still don't want to get stung. Like, I've been stung by a wasp before. It sucks. And they can do it as many times as they want to. Their stinger doesn't come out when they sting you, like, say, with bees. Okay, we're all saved, healed up, and now we can move on to inspect these ruins, see what we can find out about the Chozo who lived here, and maybe uh, since the Chozo are or were here, maybe they left behind some tech that we can incorporate into our power suit. So we're going to search for some of that, but that's going to have to wait until next time. And until next time, thank you for watching That LP Show, and have a one that is good.